Hi folks, welcome to our first logical system called Boole. The centerpiece of Boole is three symbols called the Boolean connectives. The, the name of them is negation, conjunction, and disjunction. They each just stand for a simple word in English. Negation is just the word not. Uh, conjunction is just the ampersand, is the word and. And disjunction, the symbol for that is the lowercase v, and it just stands for the letter, uh, the word or. Each of these is called a connective because it has a gap in it. See these ellipses? This is a place where we can insert something else. And what you're allowed to insert in there is a whole sentence. So the Boolean connectives are also known as sentential connectives because what they connect together or connect onto are whole sentences. Those sentences are gonna be represented by uppercase letters like the letter P or the letter Q. So negation is a one place connective. It just takes one input, it has one uh, ellipses where we can insert some other sentence. So even though negation only connects onto one thing, it is still called one of our connectives. Conjunction and disjunction are binary connectives. That means they have two gaps or ellipses in them where we can insert things. In all of these examples, I've inserted simple uh, atomic sentence letters, but we can also insert complex letters there as well. Okay, let me give you a job to see if you can start using these things. Here's a sentence in English. Either Pia likes logic and philosophy, or she likes history and stats. What I want you to do is try to figure out how to translate this sentence. Um, I've given you some options here, so just pick A, B, C, or D. Pause your videos now and think about each of these answers. Okay, last chance to pause your videos. We're gonna talk about the answer now. Okay, when we translate things into Boole, the basic rule is choose atomic sentence letters that make the most sense. So since then we're talking about Pia liking logic and Pia liking philosophy, I thought I'm gonna just use L for logic, that Pia likes logic, P for Pia likes philosophy, and I'm gonna use H for history and S for stats. So that's why my preferred translation is D. What this says is uh, Pia likes logic and philosophy, or she likes history and stats. Now, some of these other translations have uh, various problems. The English sentence doesn't have a bunch of negations in here, and so we don't want to translate it into bool with a lot of negations. There's a problem with translation B as well, even though B and D are very similar. There's grouping in D, which is lacking in B, and that grouping is actually essential. When you have a mixture of Boolean connectives, conjunctions and disjunctions, you need parentheses uh, in order for the system to not break down. A is an interesting option. Technically speaking, if you said A, you're, you're not wrong. Uh, I guess technically speaking, that means you're right. Because there is some arbitrariness in our choice of sentence letters. And I could use P for P likes logic and Q for P likes philosophy. So notice that the logical structure of A and D are the same. And we get to assign what meaning we want to these atomic sentence letters. So you could do it the way A does. But again, D is the preferred answer because what I want you to do is choose the sentence letters that makes it as readable as possible. See, Q and R, these are just random. These have no relationship to what's going on in the English. And it's always a good idea to translate things in a meaningful way rather than an arbitrary way. All right, let me be a little clear on the system that we're developing with Boole. Logical systems, we said this earlier, have three components. They have a formal language, they have a semantics or meaning, and then they have a proof system or proof theory. What we're talking about here is just part one. This is the, how the basic language of Bool works. And there's a couple of different categories. These are like linguistic or grammatical categories. Sentences are one kind of grammatical object. They come in two varieties, atomic and complex. So sentence letters like P, Q, R, any capital letter is gonna count as an atomic sentence. And atomic sentences are gonna be things in English which don't have another sentence as a component. Like P likes logic. There's no sentence in English that makes up a sub part of that. That's only made up of noun, nouns and verbs. There are no whole sentences in there. Complex sentences though, they do have whole sentences as their parts. Like think about that example we just said, P likes logic and philosophy. There's, there's two hidden sentences in there, P likes logic and P likes philosophy. And that complex sentence has whole sentences as its constituents. Now, how do we make complex sentences in Boole? We just use the Boolean connectives. So in general, connectives are a broad category, which is ways of making complex sentences or complex objects in your language. And the, in Bool, we're just gonna have three, three of these connectives, the three Boolean connectives. But I'm gonna, I give you some other categories here, just so you have it on your, in your conceptual space. Not all connectives have to be true functional. It turns out in English, there's lots of connectives which are not true functional. 
But any formal system that we build in this class, like Google, will have only true functional connectives. So I mention this here because it's a part of English, but it's not a part of Google. All the connectives in Google are going to be true functional. And not all true functional connectives are Boolean, but the ones in Boole are all Boolean. So Boole is just going to have those three connectives in its language. Now, what does true functional mean? We'll talk about that uh, in a subsequent video. So um, keep your ears open for it. For now, let's, let's return to the idea of atomic sentences. Sometimes um, I gave you the rule, always pick the atomic sentence that just makes the most sense. Like if you have to translate P is guilty and Quinn is guilty, let's just pick P and Q for those. Um, again, uh, if I need to say Pia is happy and Pia is tired, I can't use P for both, even though they're about Pia. So I'll just use H for happy and T for tired. Now, what if I also had to say Pia is hungry? There is no natural choice there. So when it breaks down, we're, we are going to have to just um, advert to random arbitrary sentences. Like I'm just going to stipulate, I'm going to use A for Pia is hungry because I've already tried to use H in a more meaningful way. So if possible, choose a meaningful letter, but if all breaks down, you just have to choose uh, another one. Now you might be worried, well, what if I have more than 26 atomic sentences that I have to translate? What do I do about this 27th one? And what I'll say is just don't worry about it. We're never gonna have an example so ridiculously complicated that you need like 54 atomic sentences. And anyway, it's not really a theoretical limitation of our system because if you, if you really like the nitty gritty, technically speaking, I'll just say this once, we don't actually need all 26 letters of the, of the English alphabet even in our language. All we need is one atomic sentence letter. Like I'm gonna choose the capital letter P and some other symbol like the prime symbol or you could use an asterisk symbol or a bunch of other things. And th think of this as like the primitive, what our language really is. I, P followed by some number of prime symbols is actually what an atomic sentence is. And just as shorthand, I'm gonna to refer to P prime as P and P prime prime as Q and P triple prime as R. But you can see that actually in this system, I truly have an unlimited number of atomic sentences. And all these you know, ways of referring to them in different, with different letters is just a convenient shorthand. So technically speaking, we do have no expressive limitations. Um, that won't be a problem. Okay, let's, let's return to a little quiz. Pause your videos now. I've got a bunch of sentences up here uh, or a bunch of strings of symbols up here. I want you to decide which one of these ones of these count as well-formed sentences of our language. So pause your videos now. This is your chance. Okay, we're going to talk about the answers. Last chance. Um, not P. Is this a sentence? Yes, this is a sentence. It's a complex one because it's not just an atomic sentence. Um, and Q. See, in English, sometimes you, you hear a grammar teacher say, never start a sentence or never start a paragraph with a conjunction with the word and. Um, but as, as a matter of English style, I disagree with that. Sometimes it's great to start with and sentences, but in Boole, you can never do this. You can't start a sentence with and in Boole. And has to go between two other sentences. Maybe they're complex, maybe they're atomic, but it's, you can't just have and connecting onto one thing. Um, this one, this P or P, this is perfectly good. So this is a sentence. Um, it's repetitive, but I can say P is guilty or P is guilty. That's a weird sentence but there's nothing grammatically wrong about it. So what counts as a sentence or not? This is just a question of the grammar of the language. What is a syntactically well-formed string of symbols? Um, and P or P is perfectly fine. So this, so the answer is yes, no, yes, no. So, so and and or go between two things, but negation can never connect on to connect two things together. This is not well-formed. So those are, that's a bad answer. So, so far we're at a count of two out of four. Um, P and Q and R. Now this is a tough one. So we're going to say that sentences have what's called an arity. There's a number of things that they combine. Uh, negation is a unary connective because it connects onto one thing. This is not well formed. Conjunction and disjunction are binary connectives because they connect two things together. They don't have to be two separate things like P and P could be connected together with the disjunction, uh, but, it, but it can't only connect onto one thing. Now, even though they're binary, we're gonna say that they can connect multiple strings like this. You see, contrast this one with the one down here. I used grouping parentheses in order to make clear exactly what, what is the order of priority of these conjunctions. See, this conjunction, the innermost one here, connects P and Q, so it's a binary connective. And then the next conjunction, it connects to this Q, and then the other thing it connects, this conjunct, is the complex sentence P and Q. And then this one connects this Q with this whole complex sentence. So 
the grouping really makes clear that conjunction is a binary connective. Nonetheless, so, so technically speaking, you might say this is not well formed because it's not connecting two separate things. This is sort of mixing up the grouping. But what we're going to say is conjunction, we're always going to call it a binary connective. That's, it truly is a binary connective. But what we're going to allow is shorthand like this, because grouping doesn't matter. If I say P and Q and R, that's really the same as saying P and Q and R. The grouping is irrelevant in that case. So, so we're going to count both of the, all of these as well-formed sentences. So even though you might say, technically speaking, this is not well-formed, um, we're going to resurrect it and say we can write any number of conjuncts together, we can string together long strings of ands or long strings of ors. What you cannot do is mix ands and ors and long strings. So it's essential that these are all the same connective. They're all and or, they are all ors like this. Lastly, this final one is well-formed too. So um, negation, double negations in English are weird, but you can have many negations str strung together in bool, no problem. See, this connective is operating on one thing, p. What about the next negation symbol? Yes, this is still operating on one thing, namely the negation of P. And this one is operating on the negation of the negation of P. This is, this is totally fine from a Boolean point of view. Okay, so this video was your introduction to the system Bool and a little bit about the grammar of it, how sentences atomic and complex are formed. All right, thanks.